What it do, y'all? It's Glad Gaming, and today we'll be talking about all the new features added in this My Hero Ultra Rumble open beta. So let's get right into it. The first new feature I want to touch on is the new finishing attack. Now, as opposed to the closed beta when you down an enemy, you can perform a finishing attack that'll get you the insta kill. In a closed beta, you will have to A, waste time trying to finish them with your melee moves once down, or B, waste your special skills trying to finish them when they're down. And a lot of times you will whiff. So the finishing attack is a very welcome feature. Also, when you finish a down enemy, it replenishes your shield back to full health. And that is a very, very cool mechanic added and a very welcome new feature. My only problem with this feature is before you do your finishing attack, your character does like this emote before he attacks. And I feel like that is a, a huge time waster because you can still take damage while finishing and you can also be knocked out of your finish move. So I think if they just take away the emotes and let it be a straight finish, then there will be no problem with this, this uh, feature in the game and it should work perfectly fine. The next feature I want to talk about is the really cool agency feature. And if you're a fan of MHA, you know the top heroes have their own agencies where different UA students go and learn different things. And in this game, they use it as a sort of clan system. So you can add players to your agency, or if you have your agency open, they can just join your agency and donate to different things in the agency, like extra experience points and etc. I don't have any footage of it. I thought I grabbed some. And due to the beta being closed at the time of me making this video, I can't grab some now. But the feature is really cool. When you get into the game, just go to the menu, go over to the agency, click agency, and you'll be able to donate to whatever agency you're in, or you'll be able to join any agency you see. There's also a ranking system for your agency. So you can be in the top 10% of all the agencies in the world, when me and my team got off last night, our agency was top two, um, but I'm sure that is, that'll change by tonight. But it gives you something to grind for, and I really think that that's what this game needs for longevity. The next feature I would like to touch on is the Plus Ultra feature. And this feature is getting a lot of mixed feelings from the community, especially my friends. And my general thoughts on it is i think it's pretty unnecessary so basically the plus ultra feature is like if you're a fan of for honor it's like a revenge system it goes up over time pretty slowly during the match but the more damage you take the faster the meter goes up and if you're in a tough situation where you're in a 1v3 or a 1v2 you can pop your plus ultra and it'll give you extra shield and plus 10 all your cards get to give you a fighting chance now there's two things that I have two ways I feel about this. I feel like, yeah, if you're queuing up solo and you have pretty incompetent randoms on your team, it is a very clutch skill to have. But if you have a team that's three stack and they're going against you and they all have plus ultra, it's pretty OP. So, all in all, before this feature was in the game in the closed beta, I feel like the game was fine and I feel like the game is fine without it now. Because I rarely ever get mines and I rarely ever use it anyway. And when I do have it, I usually forget I have it anyway. So I believe it can be taken out of the game. Let me know how you guys feel about it in the comments. Moving on, the next feature I would like to talk about is the revive system. Now when I first seen the revive system, I was a little iffy on it. I believe in battle royales that once you're, you die, you're dead. I've never been a fan of the revive system in any battle royale. Even though I know a lot of battle royale fans are. But when I played this game and I seen how the revive system works, I was actually happy with it. So the revive system isn't a free bring your partner back system. You have to actually find revive cards around the map and they show up randomly in crates and off of civilians. So you may even pick up your partner's badge, but the odds of you getting a revive may not may be slim to none, especially if there is no loot on the map. You can find the Insta Revive, or you can find three Revive cards to get you one character back. And I believe that the system is very balanced and very good, because you can go a whole match and I find a single Revive card. Um, you can kill other players and grab their Revive cards as well, but you can go a whole match and not kill a player with a Revive card, or they can already have used their Revive cards. So it makes the matches pretty unpredictable. And it also gives you a way to get more kills due to it being such a low count of players in matches. 
And the little extra FYI on the revive cards is there your friend's badge never disappears. So if you have to get off the scene and double back to grab their badge, I would definitely recommend it because it'll be there for the entirety of the game. The next and final feature I would like to talk about is the gotcha system and the new dailies and weeklies all as a whole. Um, I will be also going over the drop rates with you guys in this video, but right now I just want to explain it to you. You guys all know how gotcha system works. You roll for different things, but in this game, you can roll for emotes, cosmetics, as well as player tickets, and a few other things, I believe, things for your banner and stuff like that, uh, inconsequential things. The most important thing here is the player tickets. So now, as opposed to the closed beta when every character was unlocked for you to use, you have to unlock characters with player tickets. And that'll be basically the system of getting new characters moving forward. Um, we don't know what characters will be unlocked in the actual game. But um, so far, it was just basically all the villains and most of the heroes. You had to unlock all the newly added heroes like Ida, Kaminari, and Kendo. But all the other heroes was pretty much unlocked. Uh, like all the basic heroes were pretty much unlocked. So when you roll with these tickets, you have a chance of getting a player ticket, and that's the only way you'll be able to get player tickets, and that's how they'll be monetizing this game. Now, depending on how the gotcha system works, I don't have a problem with that as long as it's not a predatory system. We can't really see how it'll truly, truly work or how much it'll really cause until later when they drop the full game, but let's go over some of these drop rates. As you can see here on the screen, the listed drop rates are rounded to the nearest thousand, so the total may not add up to 100%. You may get duplicate rolls from this OBT regular roll phase half. If you use a 10 times roll, you will get at least a 2 star or higher drop. For all other drop rates, see normal 9 and 10 times roll for each roll. Now, as you can see, the most important drop rate is at 3%. Everything else is like at a 0.3% for like the 3 star pulls, and everything else is just emotes and voice lines. But for the character tickets, that 3% is not going to last past this beta, I'm almost sure. I believe at the lowest it should go is 1%. I believe the only way it will stay at 3% is if they drop like a lot of characters on release, a lot of, which I'm not expecting. But it's definitely not going to stay at 3%. Hopefully it doesn't go lower than 3% so people can have play with the characters they want without having to break the bank. But... As of right now, it's 3%, and for all the 3-star uh, cosmetics you can get for different characters, the drop rate is at 0.3%, which is whatever, because cosmetics aren't that important. It doesn't affect the gameplay. It's, it's, it's not pay to win. I feel like this gotcha system is pretty good right now. We'll see how they do the character tickets on full release, but right now it's pretty good. They're being pretty generous. You get your road tickets from doing your daily quest and your weekly quest i believe and they've been being pretty generous with the road tickets so basically as of right now you're playing the beta road to your heart's consent don't be stingy with your tickets you could pretty much unlock every character you want in one day just like i did and that's about all for all the new features at least the ones that i think are the most important that affect the game the most um, comment below any features you guys think I missed. Comment below how you feel about these features in the game, how you feel about the gotcha system and the drop rates, as well as the plus ultra. I really want to hear how people feel about the plus ultra, because it's definitely getting a lot of mixed feelings. Thank you guys for watching if you stayed this long. Feel free to stick around and finish watching the gameplay. It was a pretty good match. I had a pretty good match with Eda, even though we didn't get the dub. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I really appreciate it. Stragglers get turned to ash. Now the match will really heat up. <laughs> I'm going here at turbo speed. Wait a 
sec. I'm going here. Wait a sec. I'm going here at turbo speed. A moment of weakness could be defeat, so stay on your guard! The safe area moves in 30 seconds! I repeat, 30 seconds! I'll mow you down! Charge! Turn to Enemy attack! Stay alert! Quickly! Steadily! I'll stop you! I'll contingent failure! Not yet! Risk it all! Oh. Ready for war? Yeah! Yeah! Ow! I'm under attack! Dang! No one's in the safe area! Rebel! Team! I'll mow you down! Stay focused! Place will be even bigger. Ready to go. Thank you. 